The government knows something about your chicken, but it's decided not to tell you, or not just yet. Over a quarter of a million people in the UK are poisoned every year by a bug called Campylobacter, and the majority of infections are caused by contaminated chicken. We were promised that the supermarkets with the most contaminated poultry would be named, but now the government's back down. How did our chicken ever get to be so dirty? The supermarkets and poultry processors insist they're doing all they can to keep our chicken clean. But in the last decade, the problems got worse. So what is happening to Britain's favourite meat? The Guardian launched an investigation to find out why poultry is making so many people ill. It's easy to get a job in the meat industry. Our undercover reporter got one in a day, paid £6.31 an hour, to bring chicken to our dinner tables. You just need to bring your ID, uh, passport, passport. Or ID, ID, bank details if you have a national insurance if you have. If not, yes. that's fine. You come in, we just have small chat, you're filling some paperwork and after you need to come for induction, that's all. Companies boast of strict hygiene policies, but we'd been told that across the industry, the reality on the factory floor can be different. Our reporter worked in a large abattoir which counts Tesco, Sainsbury's, Aldi and KFC among its customers. Welcome to the secret world of cheap chicken. It's the UK's favourite meat and it's making us sick. I got cold sores all over my lips going to get out of bed. I couldn't, I couldn't use either of my legs properly. The likely culprit? Chicken. The Guardian spoke to two whistleblowers who shed light on how chicken gets contaminated. Between them, they've spent over 15 years in the meat industry. Feces will be usually fairly wet, runny. This would get all over the feathers, so it would get over you when you try and pick them up. Things would pile up and drop on the floor. You would basically just wipe it down and put it back on the line. And our undercover reporter also witnessed things firsthand. But I've never, I've never worked in a, in a chicken factory before. So for me, this whole experience was really intense. Britain loves chicken. We eat more than one million tonnes of poultry a year. But Campylobacter also loves chicken. The government's own tests show that two thirds of fresh poultry is contaminated with the bug. You can kill it with thorough cooking, but it's easy to spread from raw meat. Campylobacter is really important. We know it's the most serious and most impactful foodborne disease. So there are over 280,000 cases each year in the UK. Many of those lead to GP referrals. Many people have to go to hospital. We know that some people suffer serious long-term complications and very unfortunately, some people die. And we also know that the majority of those cases can be linked back to poultry. They know more than that. They know when chickens are most likely to become contaminated, on intensive farms, in abattoirs, and when they're cut and packed and hygiene standards are not followed properly. In Britain, we slaughter a staggering 17 million birds each week. Some supermarkets offer a whole chicken for as little as £2.50 a kilo. With prices so low, producing chickens for mass consumption has to be fast, intensive work. Experts like Ron Spellman, who worked as a poultry inspector for 12 years, says the system inevitably increases the risk of Campylobacter. When you've got um, chicken slaughterhouses in Britain, killing a million birds a week, three quarters of a million birds a week, 10 to 12,000 chickens an hour. No one's ever seriously tried, I don't think, to keep run the line slower. It's very, very difficult in using these sort of modern techniques to actually end up with poultry which is not contaminated. We know that. Margins are low, volumes have to be high, and a few key players control the majority of the market from farms to supermarket shelves? Well, to reduce the level of faecal contamination, which is the real source of Campylobacter, 
means the line will have to run slower, it'll have to be stopped more often, and that will inevitably be expensive. It will put up the price of chicken because you're producing them more slowly. We know there is no silver bullet, and so it requires a number of interventions all the way along the supply chain. So at farm, at processing, at retail, and what we do in our own domestic kitchens. So what we need is everyone at every stage of that chain to take it seriously, to take their responsibilities seriously. The Guardian's five-month investigation wanted to find out if anyone is taking responsibility. We obtained these photographs, taken just last month. They're from Llanethley Processing Plant in Anglesey, owned by two sisters, the largest poultry processor in the UK. Tesco, m and and Asda are among customers here for chicken for their ready meals. This was the scene on the evisceration line one day last month. Pipes that are supposed to carry away the innards of dead chickens were blocked. Guts and offal had been spewing over the floor for hours. This is high-risk material for Campylobacter, and we're told it's not the first time it's happened. Ron Spellman is now a leader of the European Association of Meat Inspectors. We showed him our evidence. Well, my God, it's just unbelievable, the amount of guts there are on the floor that there's obviously some sort of a breakdown it's a very, very bad sign, isn't it? I mean, if the, if the factory are prepared to carry on working and, and they're allowed by the officials on site to carry on working with conditions like that, it's terrible. And there are more shocking pictures. Same factory, same month, another breakdown. This is the defeathering area. It's another high-risk point for Campylobacter contamination because feathers can carry faecal material. For food safety, feathers should be cleaned away promptly, but the water pump's not working and the line hasn't been stopped. What do you make of what you're looking at there? Well, it's dreadful. I mean, and in conjunction with the other pictures of the big heaps of guts, etc., it would seem the equipment and this plant, you know, malfunctions pretty often. Two sisters told us they and the site vet had to weigh up stopping the line against animal welfare. If they had stopped it for the evisceration or defeathering breakdown, a large number of chickens waiting to be slaughtered would have been held in their crates for too long. They told us they have invested in the plant. The trouble across the industry is that cleaning up would cost money, and so far, it and the retailers haven't spent enough. Broken machinery isn't the only problem in Wales. The slaughtered birds all pass through a school tank to loosen their feathers before plucking. We were told the tank wasn't clean for two nights last month, so that three days of fresh birds, around a quarter of a million chickens, pass through the same soup of dirty water. Can pile a back to could breathe. Could, yeah, yeah, it could be alive in the bubbles and the foam yeah. on top. And what does that mean for birds, new birds coming in? Yeah, the new system. birds coming in, and as they come out, they come out through the foam, so there's a good chance that they'll come out with a coating of, of, of foam with, with, loaded with bacteria. The company said this was an isolated incident that only lasted one day and that it tested for bacteria levels and found no problem. Photographs aren't the only evidence we have about two sisters. We also spoke to Jamie Pritchard. He worked at Llanethny for four months, debreasting chickens on the production line until he left in August last year. He says there were occasions when things operated well, when clients were visiting to audit the factory. Um, I think it's quite prevalent that you know, if there would be a, a site order that day, everything would be um, absolutely perfect. You know, the line speed would be running at the correct speed. The carcasses would be clean. Um, there'd be no faeces in, inside. But Jamie says it was a different story when no clients were visiting. On different contrast to the days when there wasn't an audit, you know, things would pile up and drop on the floor. Um, you know, you'd be told that if there was a visit, you'd put them in the bin for not for human consumption. But, you know, on days that there wasn't uh, an audit, then you would basically just wipe it down and put it back on the line. The Guardian's undercover investigation, however, suggested that problems weren't confined to just one Two Sisters plant. During five days undercover in Scunthorpe last month, our reporter says he saw breaches of hygiene rules too. 
there are, you know, with chickens stacking in front of you, and you know, like it, they fell on the floor, and I saw a lot of people dropping chickens on the floor and and picking them up and throwing them back in the ba basket and without even blinking. It's almost like something on a cartoon where the truck runs over it. I mean, that's someone's going to eat that. It's their food. The individual birds are worse, very, very little. It's a sign of a bad culture in the, in the attitude of the staff towards human food that they're producing. We don't know where this chicken ended up. Two Sisters says it has very strict policies to ensure that chicken that falls on the floor is always sent for waste. But it's not just in the processing plants that Campylobacter spreads. Farms are also breeding grounds. Meet Paul Sadler. He worked in the industry for 15 years as a chicken catcher for Facenda, another major poultry supplier to big supermarkets and fast food chains, including Asda and Nando's. You'd have six people working in a team, usually, you know, typically. One of those would be the forklift driver. Now, he would come in, drop these down at strategic points around the chicken shed, uh, and then go out and bring more in. And then the remaining five people would go round to just pick the chickens up, perhaps four or five in each hand, and then physically load them into the crates by hand. This undercover footage was taken by an animal charity at a separate company during catching. Because chicken sheds are stocked so intensively, some birds have to be thinned out after a few weeks, otherwise the rest of the chickens wouldn't have enough room to grow to slaughter weight. This thinning is a key point for Campylobacter spread. So the faeces would be usually fairly wet, runny. This would get all over the feathers, so it would get over you when you try and pick them up. Chickens panic and defecate when stressed, and bacteria can easily be spread on workers' boots and vehicles. And some birds are crated for hours while being transported, and waiting to be unloaded for slaughter, increasing stress levels and Campylobacter spread. Paul says that during his time with the company, workers didn't always follow the rules for reducing the spread of the bug. As far as biosecurity was concerned, they used to pay lip service to it, uh, but the emphasis was always on trying to demonstrate that they'd complied with the legislation or good practice rather than actually following it. Facenda told us this wasn't true and said it had invested heavily in good wages and training to make sure staff were highly motivated to follow the biosecurity rules. If you wonder why all these hygiene rules matter, ask Julie Wilson. A nurse from London, she's got all too direct experience of Campylobacter. For some, the bug means a few days off work with diarrhoea and vomiting, but not for Julie. I wasn't bouncing back. I, I still, even when I began to be able to eat a little bit, didn't feel better. Um, and then I got cold sores all over my lips. It wasn't till the following day when going to get out of bed, I couldn't. I couldn't use either of my legs properly. Julie had developed Guillain-Barre syndrome, an autoimmune disease that's a rare complication of Campylobacter. I lead as normal a life as possible. I'm as um, independent as I can be, but I am not nor back to normal at all, and um, probably not will not be ever. We think it's the job of industry to crack this problem. They're making money from selling chicken. They have uh, the levers. They have the resources to reduce the levels of Campylobacter in poultry. The government, in fact, got so frustrated at lack of progress, it announced that it would name and shame processors and retailers for their Campylobacter counts. It now has the results of new tests to do just that. But the industry has persuaded it to back down for the moment. Isn't not publishing their names letting them off the hook? It's a judgment call as to what we publish when. Our view is that if we publish the results piecemeal, in dribs and drabs. Um, we won't ask people to draw unwarranted conclusions from partial data, but other people might. And we don't want consumers being misled or confused. The Food Standards Agency says it won't publish the names until next year. So for now, what we do know 
is that around two out of every three chickens we buy could make us sick. Even though the Guardian investigation has recorded scenes like this, the government still says that the public will have to wait before it names the supermarkets. These are the modern day slave ships, producing the prawns on your plate, using the work of men who have been sold to the sea. <laughs> 